European Union and as well as DS2031, another important document for export of shrimps into US and certificate of origin to various countries. Similarly, Empada is a market promotion agency. So being a market promotion agency, we are participating in various international trade fairs as well as we are also organizing international trade fairs like a seafood so India International Seafood Show and then Aqua Aquaria India. And similarly, we are extending a lot of financial and technical assistance schemes for uh, setting up the plan for the new entrepreneur. And similarly, we are organizing various uh, capacity building uh, training programs on value additions, regulations, HACCP, and best manufacturing practices, etc. So, and with reference to aquaculture, uh, we are enrolling the farms and hatcheries. We are giving demonstration of uh, and technology transfer of uh, diversified uh, species for aquaculture and we are extending financial assistance for setting above the new aqua farms and we are also coming up with a certification for hatcheries and it is a pilot based scheme safari one uh, uh, hatchery certification scheme we introduced recently and apart from that we are also operating uh, various quality control laboratories and then ELISA labs throughout the coastline of uh, India to test our uh, products uh, to find its feasibility and uh, compliance for export. And similarly, we are also monitoring the quality of the uh, processing plants, those who are uh, processing uh, products for export. And coming to the entities registered, so we are having 1,533 exporters registered with us. And uh, as on date, we are having about 610 processing plants. Out of that, 344 are having EU standards and 266 processing plants are functioning with non-EU standards. And installed capacity of these 610 plants per day capacity is about 33,500 tons. And uh, these plants are having 640 cold storage attached to those plants. So in those storage, we can able to store almost 3 lakh 78 lakh metric tons uh, processed material for export. And when we are going into the different kinds of freezing in uh, processing, so we are having a, a more focus on value addition. So, so these are all the entities available for value addition. So about 202 uh, IQF freezing plants are there. Their production capacity is about 3,266 tons per day. And similarly, we are having 31 cooking units, means in the IQF itself, they're having the facility for cooking and blanching. So 31 such plant, plants are there throughout India. So their production capacity is about 380 tons per day. And apart from this, we are having 16 canning or retard pouch processing plant. So it is having a daily production capacity of 66 tons per day. So coming to the international trade, so India is the fourth largest exporter of marine products in the world. So China is number one, Norway is number two, Vietnam is number uh, three, and then India is occupying its fourth position in international seafood trade. So you can see last 12 years export uh, performance of marine products from India so you can see the last, the current in mean last year, 21-22, uh, soon recorded um, uh, ever high uh, export uh, uh, revenues uh, for the past 12 years, not only for the, since inception. So we almost reached uh, 7.8 uh, uh, billion US dollars, and uh, we exported almost 15 lakh uh, uh, metric tons marine products from India to about 121 countries. So there was a setback in the year 2021 uh, due to COVID, but that setback we overcome during last year, 21-22. So almost we uh, achieved a 31 percentage growth in terms of value as well as by a quantity. So you can see the last three years comparison. So as I told you, so when compared with the 2020-21, this 21-22 time, we uh, recorded 30% growth in terms of uh, quantity. Similarly, 31 percentage in terms of US dollar a million uh, foreign exchange earning. So coming into detailed item-wise exports, 
So you can see 2021 uh, item wise data as well as 21, 22 item wise data in terms of US dollar. So in both year, uh, frozen shrimps uh, uh, constitute the number one item in our export basket, then followed by uh, frozen fish, frozen cuttlefish, I mean squid, cuttlefish, dried item, then uh, chilled and live items. So there is not much change in the items exported between uh, last year and then previous year. Similarly, when you look into market-wise export data for the year 2021, in comparison with the year uh, last year 21-22, there also not much change, so though little fluctuation in quantities. Then again, US uh, become the number one uh, country to import uh, marine products from India, followed by EU and China. Similarly, Southeast Asia also having 10 percentage uh, market share for uh, marine products than uh, Japan and Middle East Asia. So coming to the aquaculture and uh, capture fisheries contribution, you can see it is a tentative data. You can see by quantity, capture fisheries is contrib contributed 54 percentage and aquaculture contributed 46 percentage in terms of quantity. But whereas in terms of value, aquaculture contributed 63 percentage and uh, capture fisheries contributed 37 percentage. So the more uh, value is due to the unit value, uh, higher unit value in export of uh, shrimp products. So in order to uh, address the conservation aspects, so there are some act and provisions in international trade. So the first one is International Union on Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources and then uh, then CITES, then uh, World Conservation Monitoring Center. So these three are the key uh, I mean, acts and the provisions to check the uh, trade in the endangered and vulnerable species uh, in the international market. So as far as India is concerned, exclusively we are having Wildlife Protection Act 1972 notified under Ministry of Environment and uh, Forest. So we are following that uh, these uh, act and rules in order to address the uh, trade on the endangered and the species. So as per the Wildlife Protection Act, these are the species uh, totally banned for the um, in international trade, though it is having very high unit value. So due to it is endangered status, these species like seahorse, giant grouper, Pondicherry shark, then uh, various sawfishes, then rays, guitar fish, Ganges shark, then marine mammals uh, like dolphin, fin whales, then sperm whale, and then uh, sea cow. So these are all the mammals totally banned to export in the international market. Then similarly, a lot of sea cells were also banned under the Wildlife Production Act 1972. So you can see the species, what are all the banned under the Wildlife, uh, Wildlife Act, Protection Act 1972 under Schedule 4. Similarly, various species of uh, lamb, lambis is also uh, prohibited under the uh, Wildlife Protection Act Schedule 4. So n number of another uh, set of species also are banned under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 Schedule 4 Part B. So I, another items are like coral reefs, then uh, black coral, uh, pipe coral, fire coral, sea fan, all uh, species of uh, sea cucumber. Everything is totally prohibited uh, into uh, international trade, so though it is having very high uh, remuneration and though it is uh, having a trade, I mean, it is traded between uh, I mean, uh, some other uh, competing countries. But India is totally uh, prohibiting these uh, species exports. So in order to properly address the uh, exploitation or any misuse of our, uh, what do you call, uh, mistrade in the endangered species. So our exim policy has categorized the products under three different heads, prohibited goods. So these prohibited goods are totally uh, not permitted to export or import unless uh, for a, a specific purpose with some proper reason. 
and other uh, kind of things are um, some sort of restricted goods so here uh, the goods is not prohibited but there are restrictions are there it has to be imported or exported only through proper licensing then free goods means this uh, any these goods are freely available for export or import uh, subject to the conditions laid down against the respective entry so like this uh, the exim policy of india categorized all the uh, fish and fishery products into three categories so you can see the uh, exim policy uh, uh, just code detail wise so as i told you this um, uh, some of the marine species um, in, uh, in, uh, and whatever declared under the um, um, wildlife protection act 1972 is totally prohibited not permitted to be exported so these uh, items are falling under 03000000 and similarly the even though there is no endangered nature in the farm bread but due to over exploitation the silver farm breads weighing less than 30 300 g is not permitted to be exported in any form frozen chilled or frozen form and similarly all kind of beach deem are the uh, totally prohibited under the exim policy similarly shark fins also prohibited totally but now there are some relaxation given uh, for export of uh, shark fins from the permitted uh, items of the sharks and similarly there are restrictions on size restrictions on the uh, lobsters and rock lobster and uh, sand lobsters so it's about 300 grams only permitted if it is 300 gram and below means it is totally uh, prohibited not to be exported uh, all the three uh, species of uh, rock lobster and sand lobsters and similarly as we already seen the various species of sea shells were also uh, uh, prohibited under the wildlife protection act as well as under the cites regulations so these sea shells are handicrafts made out of these sea shells were also prohibited and subject to various checks and balance for export into international market and similarly sea weeds uh, were listed under restricted items so since in tamil nadu we are coming up with some uh, what you call uh, cultivation of sea weeds so since we are not destroying the naturally available sea weeds so based on the uh, established facts and figures and showing the culture area and then uh, holding the stock holding uh, potentials of the culture area so we can get the license so it is not free for export but uh, we need to get a proper license from dgft for export of uh, sea weeds of some species uh, I mean excluding uh, brown sea weeds and uh, agropites um, um, only permitted so other things are totally restricted so apart from this uh, we are also promoting uh, installation of turtle excluded device as per section 609 of us public law it mandates the installation of a turtle excluded device uh, for the trawlers used for uh, fishing so presently we are not um, properly implemented in various states one or two states were not keen on implementing turtle excluded devices that is the reason us banned export of wild caught shrimps from india due to non implementation of ted throughout the state so due to this uh, steps india lost almost 2500 crore uh, market uh, for of uh, export seafood wild caught seafood uh, exports and similarly we are also representing uh, the uh, noaa to make a study and again to permit the selective uh, uh, species of shrimps for export so that process is going on so you can see the uh, uh, yeah, marine fishing regulation act provisions of various states where turtle excluded devices uh, implementation is uh, essential for operating the trawl boats you can see the kerala already notified so all uh, trawl uh, bottom and all bottom trawl boats need to have the turtle excluded devices similarly tamil nadu also notified uh, to have that uh, ted during the specified period 
as may be notified by the authorized officers so so these provisions uh, they made only to install turtle excluded devices during the breeding season of the turtles similarly for andhra pradesh also they made uh, mandatory to install the turtle excluded devices in all their bottom uh, trawl nets so orissa also made mandatory maharashtra still uh, there is no provision made in their mfr act and similarly west bengal also uh, made some uh, provisions to include address the turtle excluded devices in their trawl net similarly gujarat karnataka goa these states were not made any provisions in their mfr act so because of this non uniformity between the mfr act with reference to turtle excluded devices so there is a setback in uh, establishing our uh, steps towards the conservation of turtle in front of us uh, authorities hence there was a ban on our indian uh, uh, i mean sea cart uh, shrimps for export into us but anyway these states uh, authorities we are persuading and they were uh, positively respond, responded and soon uh, the turtle excluded devices will be made mandatory in the remaining states those who are not made mandatory so far so very soon all the states in uh, maritime states in india will made the installation of turtle excluded device as a mandatory thing and slowly we can able to establish the fact to the us authorities to gain our uh, see if got shrimps exports back similarly other another act is marine mammal protection act so under this act so all the marine mammals need to be properly uh, assessed and need to be properly protected so this uh, uh, to in order to address this act empada in association with the uh, cmfr and fsi uh, conducted a visual survey both in offshore and onshore and we have also conducted the stakeholders meeting and we have submitted our study report uh, to us and then they also uh, accepted our report and then uh, based on that they permitted uh, our exports and from 1st january 2023 onwards uh, this uh, marine mammal protection act will be mandatory for uh, export anything into us and similarly iuu fishing so is mandatory for uh, export anything to eu so eu regulation uh, 1005 bar 2008 um, uh, made in the year 2008 insist uh, to implement iuu uh, monitoring uh, procedures and accordingly we are having the uh, cas certification system and we have established a, a very good system for collect, collection and uh, recording of the uh, fish catch data in real time basis by deploying harbor data collector in 100 harbors under major harbors across the india and based on this only we could able to continue our exports to european union and in order to address all these uh, what you call conservation uh, and uh, sustainable uh, fishing practices among uh, fishermen empada we have established a society called uh, network for fish quality management and sustainable fishing netfish so it is a society exclusively uh, working for the uh, training conservation and sustainable fishing for the fishermen so because uh, we felt that the this training need to be taken in regional languages by the regional level experts with the regional level leaders so that is the reason we formed the netfish so these are the main areas with reference to conservation and sustainable fishing netfish is concentrating so educating importance of coral reefs educating importance of mangroves educating importance of uh, turtle in the among the fishermen and uh, advantages of implementing bycatch reduction devices and uh, adverse effect of juvenile fishing and uh, impact of the marine pollution all those things we are educating the fishermen by conducting various uh, levels of uh, training in their local language with the identified resource persons locally 
and we are having n number of programs to address these uh, key aspects of conservation and sustainable fishing especially mesh size regulation and similarly implementation of square mesh a card end and then uh, proper implementation of the maritime regulation acts among the stakeholders so we are having n number of uh, leaflets and brochures in their own language so that they can able to understand what are all the uh, importance of uh, implementing square mesh card and why we have to implement square mesh card and implement instead of diamond mesh card and and similarly complications of overfishing and uh, we are also educating fishermen about the eco friendly sustainable fishing methods and then um, reduction of the bycatches and then importance of the mangroves coral reefs and then uh, destruction of uh, I mean, uh, reduction of juvenile fishing and then uh, implementing uh, responsible fishing practices then uh, complications of pollution in the fishing harbors so like that uh, we are uh, educating the fishermen in various states in their own language through the societies by engaging the regional level experts so that the fishermen they can able to understand the uh, principles and then uh, understand the need of the hour so accordingly there is a slow momentum uh, in the uh, stakeholders to have a keen idea on the conservation and then uh, sustainable fishing practices so similarly we are also having lot of uh, um, training uh, manuals and animation films so that the fishermen and other stakeholders they can very well understand the uh, requirements of these uh, principles in the fishing uh, industry and similarly we are having a uh, number of uh, posters in the uh, fishing harbor and we are displaying these posters in the uh, all the fishing harbors in india so that it will um, slowly the fishermen will get education so what are the complications of um, coastal pollution uh, what are the advantages of square mesh card and and what are the safety measures for the fishermen like that we are educating the fishermen uh, at various levels so these are all the um, focus area of our uh, empada uh, to educate our fishermen mainly we are educating them about the uh, impact of juvenal fishing then advantage of uh, implementing square cast square mesh card and instead of a diamond mesh diamond shaped uh, card and then vessel monitoring program especially uh, declaring the catches and uh, we are educating the fishermen in all the hundred harbors so how to declare the catches how to uh, declare their catches for our catch certification program even we are having mobile app and we are having the uh data log sheet drop provisions so that we can able to uh, monitor the catches and similarly harbor development programs so we are uh, a member of the harbor management committee in each maritime state so we can able to uh, address the uh, post harvest loss and we are also giving a lot of financial assistance through ministry of agriculture for establishing uh, various infrastructure facilities to facilitate a uh, proper handling of uh, fishes for export market as well as to avoid post harvest losses and similarly we are also promoting society formation for effective harbor management uh, uh, in various harbors so we can say munambam society model is one such a successful model so there the society itself for making revenue from the harbor and they are effectively using the revenue for proper management and improvement of the uh, harbor effectively and similarly uh, we are also educating the fishermen on overall uh, control in the fishing and conservation by uh, giving periodic trainings so these are all the conservation measures we are periodically addressing so we are promoting installation of turtle excluded devices So in various states, Empada through Netface, we are distributing turtle excluded devices free of cost to the drawn boat owners, and we are also demonstrating the usage of turtle excluded devices in onboard fishing vessels. 
so that we can able to establish the advantage of uh, turtle excluded devices and we are also convincing the fishermen that there is no much loss in their catches due to installation of the turtle excluded devices now slowly we have to make uh, other states like uh, uh, karnataka goa and maharashtra to make the turtle excluded devices as a mandatory for all their trawl boats so we can able to uh, install these uh, devices throughout india and uh, we can again gain our uh, export market of sea cod shrimps into us and similarly we are promoting square mesh cod and in trawl net so we are giving training to the fishermen on changing their uh, cod and with square mesh so we are giving square mesh free of cost eh? and we are conducting such a training program with uh, help of technical expert shipnet eh? so that we can able to slowly uh, promote this square mesh cod and so with this square mesh cod and uh, we can um, avoid joinal fishing and similarly the what do you call this uh, fuel efficiency of the vessel also will improve because of the diamond shape cord and the cord end of the trawl net get choked and they need to give a very maximum torque to move the vessel whereas in the square mesh cord end so since the cord end is not uh, soaked that much so they can very well uh, move their trawl boat with minimum torque so with this they can able to save a very uh, high level of uh, fuel so with that slowly we are educating fishermen in various states to change into square mesh cord end and similarly mesh size regulation also slowly we are uh, in monitoring across the uh, state through our uh, stakeholders and slowly they are also changing into proper implementation of the mesh sizes similarly embda is promoting to uh, declare minimum legal size so kerala is the first state in india declared a minimum legal size for 58 species of commercially important species so with that they can able to regulate and conserve uh, um, commercially exploited species so quoting that model we are persuading other states to uh, uh, declare the minimum legal sizes so accordingly recently uh, karnataka also uh, implemented their minimum legal size act similarly we are also uh, in promoting the uh, regulations in uh, boat uh, length and then engine power by uh, insisting the uh, in, uh, various stakeholders through our harbor management committees and similarly we are also uh, in uh, insisting all our maritime states to strengthen the marine enforce wing so that the conservation aspects of the uh, maritime uh, regulation act will be properly monitored as i told you we are conducting various uh, training on demonstration of the turtle excluded devices and then implementation of the square cord mesh and similarly we have displayed the minimum legal size notifications in the prominent places of the harbor so that the fishermen will get, get educated and we are also uh, insisting this minimum legal size notification uh, for other maritime states so slowly within a year or two we are hoping that uh, all maritime states based on the available and uh, major fishery resource with their state they can able to declare minimum legal size so that we can avoid uh, joinal fishing so these are the minimum legal size declared by the government of kerala for the potentially important species available in their waters so as i told you we are also doing regular interaction with the stakeholders on various aspects of conservation so similarly marine uh, turtle conservation program uh, we have conducted and we every year we are uh, conducting such kind of program throughout the maritime states educating the fishermen on importance of the marine turtle in our ecosystem and similarly as i told you we are promoting uh, implementation of square mesh cod and and we are also distributing the square mesh cod and uh, free of cost to the interested to fishermen if they are intending means within couple of weeks uh, we can supply as many as square mesh cod and based on their requirement and similarly we we are promoting the 
vessel uh, catch declaration uh, by the fisherman so as i told you in our all 100 harbors our data collector slowly educating the fisherman on declaring their catches and those who are regularly declaring catches voluntarily we are giving some uh, uh, what you call uh, free uh, kits like uh, shovel and uh, uh, plastic uh, nets uh, gloves uh, boat cleaning material like that uh, we are uh, giving some incentives so that these people slowly will make that as a habit of declaring the their catches so that we can able to document uh, a pool proof uh, catch certification process similarly we are also uh, keeping sign boards in various fishing harbor about the importance of uh, turtle excluded devices and uh, square mesh card and uh, implementation all those things so we are also uh, collecting the uh, harbor uh, I mean, uh, fishing in uh, fish landing day details on each uh, harbor in a single day so that we are having a dynamic system of uh, reporting our uh, catches in our catch certification uh, modules so that we can have a 100 percent uh, full proof system for our catch certification uh, for export into european union and similarly marine mammal and turtle excluded devices also we are conducting periodical training for the stakeholders and we are also conducting various harbor cleanup programs by educating mean, uh, involving the uh, schools in the fisherman villages colleges in the fisherman villages so that this uh, cleanup will be a regular program not an occasional program so we are also conducting such a patwara event in the, all the fishing harbor by uh, involving the stakeholders or uh, fishermen societies in the concerned fishing harbor through our society called netfish so you can see we are having regular harbor cleanup program and as well as uh, coastal cleanup programs in various maritime states throughout the india on various occasions thank you so like this we are uh, promoting export as well as we are also addressing the requirements for conservation of the endangered species so with this i am concluding my presentation if any questions is there we can discuss on this hello uh, sir thank you very much for your uh, elaborative presentation and uh, this is jay kumar so i have one question this yeah. minimum legal size uh, yeah, how minimum legal. it is uh, is it uh, voluntary or mandatory in kerala yeah it is uh, mandatory in kerala uh, kerala uh, fisheries department in association with cmfri they have made a detailed study of the various fish species available in their waters and based on their study they came to a, a conclusion and they have issued a notification on minimum legal size so those who are capturing the fishes below this size are offenders as for this notifications so they are randomly checking their catches and they are checking the uh, sizes of the fishes so accordingly there is a um, uh, what you call uh, strict implementation on the minimum legal size at least during the peak season of the uh, state so like that uh, slowly uh, karnataka also now started implementing so like this we are in, uh, insisting other maritime states also to declare this minimum legal size and then to start implementing this at field level so that slowly this can be take forward in a large scale okay thank you thank you sir yes sir uh, this is sudan uh, i have one more question on uh, what is your view on cat certification and market based regulatory measures 
for sea turtle conservation. Though we talked about uh, TED and its uh, not implementation or non implementation of uh, TED among the fisher folk. So, how well we can uh, manage these things with respect to market based regulatory measures? Yeah, presently, uh, uh, due to uh, what do you call uh, improper implementation of uh, turtle exclude devices, so US were uh, exposed their. Uh, what do you call, I mean, uh, their decision that uh, we have to properly implement the turtle excluded devices, then only they will permit our uh, sea cod shrimps into US market. So as I already told you, uh, in few states, uh, they are implementing and other few states, they are implementing only through the breeding season. And in some states, uh, still they have to notify under their MFR Act. So, and again, there is a come up apprehension from the fisherman uh, that uh, by implementing the turtle excluded device, uh, they are losing their catches like that. But through various training in their, uh, I mean, uh, at various fishing harbor, we establish that hardly five to seven percentage catch loss will be there by, ex by implementing turtle excluded devices. That too, it is not a big fish is getting escaped. Only a juvenile fishes, which is going to be a future fish for the fisherman. So slowly they are getting um, an understanding the importance of the turtle excluded device. But we have to go with a strict implementation of the uh, MFR Act. Uh, so the, then only we can able to implement this turtle excluded device uh, with 100% uh, in all the trawl boards. So that's the reason we are uh, first insisting the maritime states to uh, declare this uh, turtle exclude device is a mandatory for operating their bottom trawl. And similarly, we are also insisting them to have a marine uh, enforcement wing because presently in some uh, states only like uh, Kerala and uh, Tamil Nadu only marine enforcement polices are there. But whereas in other states, there is no such uh, facilities available. So uh, fishery, uh, fishing harbor officials with uh, four or five, they are not in a position to properly implement or monitor. So there is a reason we are uh, uh, I mean, insisting the other states to have a marine enforcement wing. And then uh, first we have to notify it, uh, those who are not notified. Then we have to go for an establishment of marine enforcement wing. Then slowly we will uh, make this a mandatory. Then we can able to uh, convince our US authorities on the implementation of the turtle exclude device. So that is the thing we are working on that with the stakeholders and with the state business department. So hope we will achieve this within a short period. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And now so the question is open for the common discussion. Since uh, Sarah has discussed about the general introductions, uh, functions of MPDA with special reference to registration entities, infrastructures, value added seafood processing on IQF, freeze drying, cooking and canning, retorting, export performance of marine products of India for the last three years, contribution of aquaculture and capture fisheries to exports. He also added few information about IUCN sites and Wildlife Protection Act and World Conservation Monitoring Center and its implementations of various programs classification of goods, tariff codes, and implementation procedures for various managerial measures for the conservation of sea turtles. Uh, I request the participants, if any queries are there, you can put it on chat box or through direct mode.
thank you sir yeah thank you thank you so thank you thank you very much sir thank you हेलो हेलो सुजान यस सर सर वी आर ऑन लाइन सुजान आर यू ऑन लाइन यस सर वी आर ऑन द लाइन सो नाउ वी आर मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट सेशन वैलिडेटरी सेक्शन as the national webinar on sea turtle conservation strategies and its implementations in india is organized by the department of fisheries biology and resource management of tnjsu research institute kutukodi hello So then, and we have the participants of from various institutions around India. We have the participants from diverse group from ICAR Central Institute of Fisheries Education, Mumbai, ICAR Directorate of Cold Water Fisheries Research, Dimtal. College of Fisheries Ludhiana Punjab College of Fisheries Lembuchara Tripura Institute of Technology and Management Gwalior Madhya Pradesh Chandrasekhar Azad University of Agriculture and Technology Kanpur College of Fisheries Nautical Technology Tutukudi and Dr MGR Fisheries College and Research Institute Talaini Airu and Dr MGR Fisheries College and Research Institute Poneri and our host in Institute Fisheries College and Research Institute, Tutukodi. As the recommended points by various eminent speakers are the establishment of turtle rehabilitation facility along the major nesting areas, hatching and release of survival competent turtlings or turtle egg ones to the shore. involving citizens in turtle conservation and management through digital platforms surveillance and monitoring mechanisms needs to be strengthened for the implementing and regulations effectively for the proper conservation and management of sea turtles so these are the following recommendations we are enlightening through this national webinar and now i call upon mr r durai raja assistant professor of department of fisheries biology and resource management fcri tutukodi to propose the formal vote of thanks thank you mr sudan and i take this opportunity to deliver a vote of thanks and the morning session that is technical session started at 10:30 am and completed by 1 pm so the following speakers dr r saravanan senior scientist from mandabam cmfri so he has uh, taken the topic sea turtle resources and their conservation 
and followed by Dr. V. R. Madhu, PhD, that is a principal scientist from uh, SIFT, Kochi, and he has uh, delivered a lecture on responsible fishing operations with a special reference to the totally excluded device. And uh, Dr. N. J. Kumar, Associate Professor and Head, DFBRM, Epstein Arai Tutukudi. So he has uh, delivered a lecture on international and national in initiatives taken for the conservation of sea turtles. And afternoon session, Mr. S. Ashok Kumar, Deputy Director, MP now. So he has delivered a lecture on conservation and management of endangered animals in seafood trade. Now we are at the end of the session. And uh, uh, the, all the participants, those who spend time over here, uh, means in the morning session as well as evening. So I would like to extend my thanks to all of you uh, for having spent time and uh, listened to us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. And the feedback link will be shared in the WhatsApp group as well as email. Uh, I kindly request the participants to fill the feedback form. And the certificate will be uh, dispatched through mail within seven working days. I thank one and all for the participation on the national webinar. Thank you one and all.